It's that time of year when some trees let go of their leaves, changing colours, some turning brown, gold, oranges and reds abound. Cooler weather, crisp mornings, shorter days are dawning. A hint of the winter to come, cosy evenings spent inside at home, along with brisk daylight walks outdoors, frosty mornings, breathing out a visible breath, layering up, Gloves, scarves, woolly tights and socks and overcoats donned. Light summer clothes disadorned. Children kicking through the leaf piles and collecting conkers for playground tournaments and enjoyment. In preparation, animals store food for the winter and hibernation. We see a harvest festival and a time for homemade preservation and remembrance. With the balance of day and night, Time hours of the autumnal equinox. The lines, the form, passing through the water like a hole, against a swell from distant currents. Lines that contract and cross and stretch over the mould of the bottom of the bay, dragging with them the silt of ages, bits of wreckage, the aphanous viscera of past lives. A man, bearded like a Greek god of the sea, eyes buried in the wrinkled face, beneath the promontory brows and lines wrought of time, worn folds, of countless expressions in the world, visions of eternity. Yet his hair is shorn, unruly, unlike the beard of coconut husk, so thick, so luxurious, that it becomes an, an eternity in itself, revealing a younger, profile of the face within. The hair seems scant, as if made of fine wire or brushwood, as if styled by some high street hairdresser into a shabby chic model, trendy setting man about at the wilderness. A boat hedged towards the sea, driven by a single diesel. There's no one visible, no helmsman, no crew, no passengers. No fishing tackle. The willow warbler may, may weigh no more than a box of matches and fit snugly into the palm of your hand, but it has a huge journey. Each year it flies to the UK from Africa, travelling more than 5,000 miles across seas, mountains and desert to arrive in time for spring. In autumn, it flies all the way back again. The willow warbler was eyeing the movement of a moth in the night garden. The owners of the house switched on the garden lights. Light, must go to the light, said the moth to himself. He aimed for the light with almost religious fervour, repeating his mantra, light must go to the light. The warbler heard the tap, tap, tap as the moth repeatedly hit his head on the glass bulb. Why do you do that, said the bird, it's crazy. The following day, the moth was resting in the bark of a tree, his head throbbing. He glanced at the bird who had begun his own mantra, cold must fly to the warm, cold must fly to the warm. Why do you go, said the moth. Africa, said the bird. How far is it to Africa? asked the moth. Five thousand miles, replied the bird. Why do you do that? said the moth. It's crazy. So this is the swan story. It's a cloudy autumn day. Most leaves have fallen. It's very calm. John is walking and stops to look out through the mist by the park where a white swan swims smoothly down the lake. John greets the swan and the swan makes a noise like it's saying hello back. It swims closer and John gets nearer but then it gets scared and swims away with the water rippling through the lake. John stands back tall and waves goodbye. He thinks inside his head, what a beautiful swan, one that I will remember for years.
Christmas. Cheesy songs from yesteryear on the radio again, harking back to a past dreamt up by the movies. Revelers rushing to buy gifts with money they don't have. Internal thoughts turning into panic and FOMO. Stressing over things that ultimately don't matter. Time with loved ones, rest and merriment is all free. Make time for yourself, resist expectations. All that matters is that you are still here. Surviving this year is enough reason to celebrate.